Hola, bueno, buenas tardes a todos. De nuevo, nuevamente estamos aquí y para presentar a quien, a nuestra primera entrevista que vamos a hacer, que es a Robert Connolly. Robert Connolly, eh, digamos, es un director australiano eh, que fue el, <coughs> obtuvo el primer premio en la primera edición del festival, el primer premio de la competencia internacional de largometrajes. Eh, Robert Connolly es australiano y la verdad que fue un, un placer tener, es un placer tener esta entrevista con él. Eh, así que bueno, lo dejamos con él, pero aparte pueden ver la película hasta el 5 de junio en eh, la plataforma Contar Puntual. Eh, nos vemos en el día de mañana, así que bueno, que disfruten de esta entrevista que es, es lo más. El décimo Festival Internacional de Cine Político Argentina, FISIP, se posterga por el COVID-19. Estaremos junto a ustedes del 27 de mayo al 4 de junio con variadas actividades online, películas ganadoras de estos nueve años y entrevistas a sus directores, clases magistrales de temas diversos con interacción de los panelistas, mesa virtual de las asociaciones de cine, exposición de los proyectos en desarrollo y algo más. Todo en forma online y gratuita. Nos acompañan el INCA, entidades de la industria audiovisual y la plataforma CONTAR. Para mayor información, www.fisip.com.ar ¡No te lo pierdas! Hi, my name is Robert Connolly. I'm the writer and director of the feature film Balibo, and I'd just like to congratulate the festival on its 10th anniversary. Um, Balibo screened in 2011, um, a massive highlight for me in my career, and um, thank you so much for the award that year. Very excited for you all that the festival is still going and surviving these very difficult times, and I hope that you're all well and the future of the festival is secure. Um, Balibo is the story of the events in East Timor, in Timor-Leste, in 1975. It was a story that was a very important one for me in my career, and one that was driven by an incredible fascination with the events of that time and the tragic uh, murder of five journalists uh, and the incredible tragedy that befell Timor-Leste, a country that lost over 200,000 people between 1975 and 1999, and um, the role of those journalists during that time uh, in 1975 and their attempts to tell the world what was happening was my way into the story. Uh, I guess as an Australian filmmaker, the fact that they were Australian-based journalists interests me. Um, but it was my many, many trips uh, to Timor-Leste that, that changed that film. Uh, it was while I was there that I discovered the story of uh, their president at the time, uh, Nobel Prize winner Jose Ramos Horta, um, and Horta's work as a young man uh, to help free their country, to help their country eventually become independent, uh, as it did in 1999. And along the way, I came to develop a great interest and respect uh, for the Timorese story, you know, for the tragedy that had befallen this country, but also uh, the story of a nation's desperate quest, successfully, ultimately, to become independent And uh, while there was great tragedy in the story, I found great optimism uh, in this incredible journey that this country had gone on. It was important for me to make the film in Timor-Leste. Um, I wasn't interested in faking it or recreating it. I, I felt compelled to make the film in that country And so we traveled there in 2008 to make the film. About what is happening here. I 
want to find out what happened to them, why it happened to them, and who did it to them. Uh, it was a time when the United Nations were still on the ground and when uh, peacekeepers were there from various different countries, uh, from Portugal, uh, from Australia, um, you know, in helping that country um, rebuild itself. And we were given permission to film there by uh, the president, Jose Ramos Horta, and to work with local filmmakers and the local people to help recreate uh, this story. Um, one of the things that, again, is a massive um, highlight in my career was actually filming the scenes in the film that occurred in the 400-year-old Portuguese fort that sits above uh, Balabo that looks out to sea um, where the journalists in 1975 had witnessed the Indonesian invasion. One of the great things was to film there, you know, to take the actors to the place where these men had witnessed these events and had sadly lost their life and to actually recreate and film those sequences in that very place where those events had happened. Um, it was an amazing experience. The Timorese army turned up and uh, helped us and played extras in the scene and, um, and many of the locals in Balabo itself who came to help us recreate the scene had actually been there in 1975. And so for them, uh, it was a, a very powerful and a very, a very moving uh, experience. Um, in terms of explaining the process of making the film, uh, being a narrative work, uh, it was a, a really interesting kind of ethical path as a filmmaker, you know, to work out how to um, tell a story through a work of dramatic fiction uh, that may in fact be the only uh, recorded um, work about the actual murder of these men. You know, how much can I change as a filmmaker? How much do I have to um, be forensic about the actual events? And I was very lucky that uh, a coronial inquiry had happened uh, while I was writing the script into the death of one of the, the five journalists, Brian Peters. And the coroner had done an amazing job of bringing witnesses from that time uh, protected into Australia and uh, had, had put together the, the pieces of what um, she, Darrell Pinch, the coroner, felt had happened. Um, and so we believed, even though we were working in the space of narrative fiction, that it was critical for us to make the uh, film as accurate as we could, you know, to use the coroner's findings to almost be a a blueprint uh, for how we we should depict those events. Um, so as you can imagine, our process took our very small and humble film crew, these amazing actors I was working with, to the township of Balabo um, with the details from the coroner of what had actually happened. And we we worked out how to recreate this, this very, very tragic event. I see burning in the streets. I can see shelling from the ships off the coast. But you know who did care those five men? Okay, they had the courage to come when no one else did. Um, I worked with a small crew. Um, I, I felt kind of that we needed to somehow have a humility about us in our presence within uh, Timor Leste, which, you know, remains one of the poorest countries in Southeast Asia and one of Australia's closest neighbours. Um, and you know, with that small, tight crew, uh, with as many locals as we could gather to work with us, um, you know, we began this journey uh, all those years ago um, to make that film. Interestingly, I returned to Timor Leste uh, for the 10-year anniversary of the film last year. I took my 15-year-old daughter with me. And we had a screening in Dili uh, for the locals. And, and over time, the film has become quite important as part of, of the nation's story um, and, and how it depicted this period of history. But what excited me most was the uh, Timorese filmmakers 
Uh, I think if that film was to be made now, it would be made by local Timorese filmmakers. Whereas when I made it back then, um, there wasn't an industry. There is now. And uh, it's exciting to see. And I'm sure perhaps in the festival in the future, you will see work uh, submitted and hopefully screened from filmmakers uh, within that culture, uh, you know, telling, telling the story of their own, their own history and, and the challenges ahead. I chose the project, uh, and it's always a very tricky journey with every film that you choose to make, but I chose the project, I think, initially out of a, a kind of curiosity with the untold stories. You know, I was 24 when I was first told the story of the Valibo Five, and I'd never heard about it, and it wasn't a story you read about in the media. And I think cinema has the, and, and documentary and works of fiction, have this opportunity to illuminate things and stories which are, which are hidden, hidden from the mainstream, uh, hidden from um, future generations. And I think one of the great uh, gifts that cinema offers in your career is the chance to put things on a record for history's sake. Uh, so the film is made it will exist and it will continue ex to exist. It, it is um, currently banned in Indonesia, and yet I meet incredible Indonesian filmmakers who've all seen the film and talk very openly about uh, its impact on them. So I think um, that is certainly something that your festival celebrates and explores, and, um, and, and you know, in terms of the global um, opportunity for filmmakers like myself to show our political work. Uh, I can't thank the festival enough uh, for the work it has done in that regard. I've come a long way to find you, Roger East. My name is Jose Ramos Horta. My country it's in grave danger. There is a story to tell and no one is telling it. You need somebody younger. Your country already sent young journalists, five of them. We sit here in Balibo and wait for an attack which may not happen at all. The buildings here are deserted. We spoke to one soldier today who believes that a potion given to him by his family... There are these five young journalists that have gone missing. I am offering you full access to my country to tell our story. That's for you. Thank you. They were sitting where you sitting. Where were they going? To their Indonesian warships off the coast. Yes. Why, they ask, are the Indonesians invading us? That's all they want. For the United Nations to care about what is happening here. I want to find out what happened to them, why it happened to them, and who did it to them. And all you care about is these five journalists. But if I find out what happened, it's going to be on the front page. <laughs> they know you are here, Roger because your country told them you are here. I can see burning in the streets. I can see shelling from the ships off the coast. But you know who did care those five men? Okay, they had the courage to come when no one else did. The next project uh, I'm working on is a political film uh, in its own way, but very different. It's based on an Australian book called Blueback by Tim Winton, and it's a film about a young girl and a fish. Uh, it's a big environmental film about saving the ocean. Again, it is a work of fiction, uh, of drama, um, but the, underly uh, the underlining uh, themes are about... Um, the optimism we need to tackle climate change. You know, the idea that when people 
despair. They are not motivated to action. And um, the ocean itself is one of the most inspiring places, you know. We've, um, we've all swum in the ocean and know that kind of intoxicating feeling that you have, the salt water, the marine life. And so somehow I'm hoping that film can capture that magic and translate it for future audiences. Uh, I've recently finished a film uh, with my very close friend, uh, the Australian actor Eric Banner, a film called The Dry. It's a detective mystery uh, set about five hours from here in regional Victoria in Australia. Uh, many of you would have seen the bushfires and the drought um, that has afflicted the land here. And that film is a detective mystery set in that world. Um, and, you know, I look forward to, you know, screening that and uh, the opportunity to show people this, you know, very powerful um, Australian story about, about our landscape, our very specific landscape, but with a global resonance as we all face the impact and the implication of climate change. This is the uh, second part of <coughs> the uh, interview responding to the questions. I see the future of cinema after COVID-19 uh, when the world comes to grips with this uh, terrible tragedy and the challenges that we're all facing as a positive one. People love the cinema. We love viewing works for the screen collectively. Um, while I'm sure many people there and here and everywhere are kind of massively consumed with content at home, that collective experience of, of watching a work and discussing it, uh, I think specifically uh, in the event cinema area, that suits works uh, of political cinema. The opportunity to screen a film and to discuss it with people and to stir up ideas and discussion through cinema is such a wonderful, wonderful thing. And I can only be optimistic that people will return to cinemas. Um, we love the experience. It was the clearly dominant art form and form of expression of the 20th century. And while here in the 21st century there's so much streaming and the consumption has largely shifted to home, my feeling is that post-COVID-19, we're all going to want to get out. We're going to want to get out and celebrate each other, our friendships, our community, live music, theatre, and, and definitely return to cinema and to film festivals like yours. Thank you for the invitation uh, to speak about my work and to reflect on Balibo uh, 10 years on with your festival. And uh, thank you again for for championing that film so early in my career. I, uh, I wish you all the best in this, this very, very difficult time and I hope you're all well and healthy and I look forward hopefully to visiting the festival in the future and all the best. La es Manasí. Él trabajaba ahí en esa época. Trabajaba. Sí, trabajaba. To him by his family. Respeta mi cuerpo. ¿A dónde va? Carlos.
capturé, torturé, humilié, colonisé, aliéné, assimilé, canalisé, civilisé, banalisé, dépouillé, fouillé, divisé, pillé, minimisé, dévalisé, capitalisé. sabe que no es uno de los nuestros. No me suena la cara. La operación Plomo Fundido dejó un 85% de víctimas civiles. El tercio de ellos, niños. Usando solamente palabras españolas. Es que tenemos nosotros eso como un arma de... conquistarán mi conciencia, pero si tengo decencia. General Perón, acompañado por el ministro de Aeronáutica, asiste a la prueba final de esta cabal expresión del esfuerzo, la capacidad y el éxito de nuestra técnica. Edmundo Weiss realizó el vuelo de prueba inaugural del Pulki 2.